good morning, afternoon, or evening, God's beloved, at whatever time of day you are engaging in this week's a little bit later than midweek meditation. Uh, I hope you'll take this as an opportunity to spend some time, not just for you, but for you and God. Our hope is that these midweek meditations are a way for you to reconnect with your own spirit and with the Holy Spirit as we go throughout these summer months. This week, I'm coming to you from my hotel room in Denver uh, as I prepare to moderate the Central Rocky Mountain region's board retreat. We'll be here through Saturday afternoon, and I look forward to being with you on Sunday to preach on this week's text which is the story that we often call the woman at the well. We've been engaging the practices of Visio and Lexio Divina for our midweek meditations. Uh, this is an invitation to consider how God might be speaking to you through your senses. To prepare us to do that, I invite you to, to take a moment to focus on your breath. And if your mind begins to wander, as mine sometimes does, you might need to remind yourself to focus on the inhale and the exhale of each breath. Take a few moments to do that. Stay mindful of your breathing as a way to keep you grounded in the present moment. When you listen to this week's scripture reading, I invite you to hold on to a word or a phrase that, that resonates with you. And then as we move into the Physio Divina, where I'll be putting some artwork up on the screen, uh, you might consider repeating that word or phrase that, that rose to the top from the scripture reading. Uh, use that as a mantra to help you stay focused during the Visio Divina portion. Would you join me in a word of prayer? Gracious and loving God, you meet us wherever we are in this life. Whether we find ourselves like the Samaritan woman at the well midday, or whether we are wandering, desperate for a drop to drink, you are there. And so we trust that you are here as we enter into these practices. Might you reveal a little more of who you are to us. In Jesus' name, amen. So for this Lexio Divina portion, I'll be reading from John's Gospel, uh, chapter 4, beginning in verse 1 and going through verse 29. I'm re reading from the New Revised Standard Version. So I invite you to close your eyes if you're comfortable doing so, and maybe imagine what it is that's happening. Call it into your mind's eye this encounter between Jesus and the Samaritan woman. Now I'm gonna read through the scripture reading once. Again, it's a little bit longer reading this week, so you might wanna go back uh, in this video and listen to it again, or maybe you want to uh, read along in your own Bible or uh, on your Bible app. Now when Jesus learned that the Pharisees had heard, Jesus is making and baptizing more disciples than John although it was not John himself, but the disciples who baptized. He left Judea and started back to Galilee, but he had to go through Samaria. So he came to a Samaritan city called Sychar, near the plot of ground that Jacob had given to his son Joseph. Jacob's well was there, and Jesus, tired out by the journey, was sitting by the well. It was about noon. A Samaritan woman came to draw water and Jesus said to her, give me a drink. His disciples had gone to the city to buy food. The Samaritan woman said to him, how is it that you, a Jew, ask a drink of me, a woman of Samaria? 
Jews do not share things in common with Samaritans. Jesus answered her, If you knew the gift of God and who it is that is saying to you, Give me a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. The woman said to him, uh, Sir, you have no bucket and the well is deep. Where do you get that uh, living water? Are you greater than our ancestor Jacob who gave us the well and with his sons and his flocks drank from it? Jesus said to her, everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again, but those who drink of the water that I will give them will never be thirsty. The water that I give will become in them a spring of water gushing up to eternal life. The woman said to him, Sir, give me this water so that I may never be thirsty or, or have to keep coming here to draw water. Jesus said to her, Go, call your husband and come back. The woman answered him, I have no husband. Jesus said to her, You are right in saying I have no husband for you have had five husbands and the one you have now is not your husband. I what you have said is true. The woman said to him, Sir, I see that you're a prophet. Our ancestors worshiped on this mountain, but you say that the place where people must worship is in Jerusalem. Jesus said to her, Woman, believe me, the hour is coming when you will worship the Father neither on this mountain nor in Jerusalem. You worship what you do not know. We worship what we know for salvation is from the Jews. But the hour is coming and is now here when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and truth. For the Father seeks such as these to worship him. God is spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. The woman said to him, I know that the Messiah is coming who is called Christ. When he comes, he will proclaim all things to us. Jesus said to her, I am he, the one who is speaking to you. Just then the disciples came. They were astonished that Jesus was speaking with a woman, but no one said, what do you want? Or why are you speaking with her? Then the woman left her water jar and went back to the city. She said to the people, Come and see a man who told me everything I have ever done. He cannot be the Messiah. Can he? So hold on to any words or phrases that stood out to you during that reading. I'm putting the artwork for this week's Time to Breathe image up on the screen. And I'll guide you now in some silent meditation. Center yourself by taking another deep breath and relaxing your body as best you can. Allow your shoulders to lower away from your ears. Let your arms rest in your lap and let your feet be fully supported by the floor. Feel the weight of your body held by the chair. Spend this time in quiet or as quiet as it can be Open yourself up to God's presence. Take a deep breath in and out. Continue breathing deeply as you read the image. In this moment, simply notice the visual qualities of what you see. Colors, line, shape, form, space, and texture. Now take a deeper look. What parts of the image are your eyes most drawn toward? What parts of the image did you quickly brush by or, or overlook at first? All right, now you've got to use your imagination a little bit. Look at the figure in this painting, what story do you assign to this one? 
What emotions would you give to them? Now observe your own emotions. How does this image make you feel? I'm going to read to you the artist statement. I invite you to continue looking at the image. It's called, You Ask of Me? The artist's name is Hannah Garrity. This is her statement. Why are you asking me? As a woman in a patriarchal society, I have been faced with subordination throughout my life. I mostly don't feel it. I have learned self-control from a young age and I have been taught to appreciate what I have. These skills are the reasons that I have the extensive happiness and comfort that I enjoy on a daily basis. However, the patriarchy still exists. Along with the external blocks, the glass ceilings, I am finding that I stand in my own way too. Despite the tireless efforts of my parents to teach us a world of equality and an opportunity, I have still imbibed the societal belief that I, as a woman, am lesser that my skills do not measure up, that my salary should not be equal or more, that I work too much, that I spend too little time with my children or that I will not succeed at the next challenge. None of these things are true and yet I throw the roadblocks of patriarchy before myself anyway. The woman at the well had multiple levels of societal oppression standing like a wall between her and Jesus. She was not the same race or gender as he, and she was unwed, unprotected. I can understand why she questioned God's call for water. Why would he address her as an equal? Are you asking me? Are you sure you meant to do that? Are you sure I measure up? As we close our time today, I invite you to take a few moments and write down or draw any final images, ideas, or questions that you have. And then get ready for Sunday. We'll worship together at 10 a.m. in person at Heart of the Rockies Christian Church or online at heartoftherockies.org. We'd love to see you there. Peace.